Welcome to my show, honey. Welcome to Soraya's Kitchen. When you're feeling blue, you don't know what to do. Carrying such a heavy load, honey, feels like you're all alone. You need a new recipe, well, I'm the one to see. Friday rolls along, you wanna hear my song, so welcome to my show. Welcome to Soraya's Kitchen. Super fabulous and super desirable, Soraya Sorbadal. Welcome to my kitchen, welcome to my show. And I'm gonna say, like I always do in the beginning, Ola, thanks for coming, thanks for being here. And now we have a brand new recipe. Now, first, before I go into the recipe, I wanna thank all the new subscribers that I have from the New York Times write up the review, right? How fabulous. Me, a little Latina from Jackson Heights and the New York Times, can you believe it? I can't. My, my hairy arms, the hairs on my arms are standing up. I can, I'm so excited. So all the subscribers, I want to thank you so much. And I want to thank the writer. I can now mention the writer's name. He was like anonymous for like eight months. I had an eight-month relationship with this man. We fought. We made amends to each other. Cliff, it was so funny. Cliff, the camera, my camera person, is here from QPTV. And you'll get to see him in a little while. But it was an eight-month relationship. It was like having a baby. One more month, and I would have had a baby. It was eight months to have the baby of the New York Times review. And as you can tell, I am ecstatic. So Alex, and maybe I won't mention your last name, but I'll say your first name. Alex, thank you so much. And Cliff, thank you for mentioning Soraya Sorbada's Fierce Cooking Show to Alex. So now we're here, and I just want to welcome you again to my kitchen. And I just, I was like kind of starting with a little, a little, a little prayer. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a spiritual girl. And I just want to thank, um, I just want to bless the kitchen. And I want to bless the ingredients that we're using and just to show that it comes out well because I was really preparing for this and it's been a heavy week uh, with everything that's happening with the New York Times, please. So I just want to just bring it nice and down and get grounded here. So we're going to start. Junie the Perez's brother used to love eating this. What is this? It's relleno de papa. Be with turkey and we're doing the recipe of course with the potato but we're gonna flip the potato mixture a little bit all right we're gonna do a little variation actually it's major major variation so let's see let's go through the ingredients now it's the potato um, the potato I'm gonna say masa so it's like a like um, a filling it's a potato filling so we're gonna take two pounds of potato now you can keep rolling that camera this is how we do it as well. So with us, we cooking show. We, get, we go in the refrigerator, out of the refrigerator, but never in the closet because we don't go back into the closet. We stay out of it. But we in the refrigerator, out of the refrigerator. So now we have two pounds of red potato that's been cut up, okay? And it's sitting in water because potato ten, has a tendency, if it's not, if you just leave it open, it's going to get brown, right? So we don't want the potatoes to get brown. We want them to stay fresh. So we have two pounds of cut um, red potato, and I leave the skin on because the skin has fiber. And also, I'm a diva that loves color, so I like when I mash the potatoes, it has the white, it has the red, it's really cute. And, you know, for some people, they may like, you know, what's the skin doing on the potato? I, that's just hard cooking, just too bad. It's still going to be tasty. So we have two pounds of the red potato that's cut up. And now with that, what we're going to do is we're going to cook that. Uh, we're going to boil it for about 30 minutes until it's soft. So what we're going to do, camera person, Cliff, what I'm going to do is, I already have the water boiling. Mm -hmm. This is the red potato. You know, we've all seen some lovely red potato in our lifetime, once at least. Um, we're going to take the red potato, I'm going to just rinse the water because I already have water boiling. Right? So I'm just going to put this here, camera person, you can... Get a glimpse of smile as she cooks. 
So we have the two pounds of red potatoes all been cut up and the water's already boiling because you know I want to get this recipe moving and grooving. So we're just gonna put that in there like that. That what we're putting in of course is the potato. Put it on high. Okay, and that's gonna cook for at least 30 minutes. We're gonna take the timer, we're gonna just set her up. And so then while we're doing that, we're gonna get to the meat mixture. And then I'm gonna come back to the potato mixture and give you all the ingredients to that, what we're gonna do to that, okay? But right now we're gonna we have a non-stick skillet, which is what I swear by, and we're gonna use this for the meat mixture, okay? So now what we're gonna do is, you such a great job, you. Now, what I told you, you guys have seen so many of my recipes, right? Oh my God, you're looking at my messy refrigerator, how horrible. <laughs> I swear, oh, I've never done a shot with this angle. But we're gonna, we're gonna come this way. Because I know the lighting is kind of tricky. So, all right, so we have, you know, Shady Brook Farm should be endorsing Sarai's for the cooking show because between this brand of turkey and there's a smoked turkey neck bone and turkey wings that I use for my rice and bean dishes, which I find in, in most uh, ethnic uh, supermarkets. Um, I use that, but I use Shady Brook Farms all the time. Their turkey breast is lovely. Their turkey sausage is fabulous. I mean, really, really fabulous. I use it in my pasteles, I use it in my pastelon, I use it in everything. So this should be like a whole brand new kitchen indoors, you know, sponsored by the Chief of Farms. But in one day, right? So I'm using sweet sausage. I'm using the whole package. What I do is I take the sausage out of the casing and then I, I brown it, right? With some fabulous Latino seasonings. So I just wanted to show everybody the package of Shady Brook Farms, and you've seen this so many times on my video. But I love them. They're, they're so delicious. They're, they have a great flavor and they're very, very lean. Like I try to be lean with my, my eating and my weight. So here we are. We have the, like, uh, I think there are six sausages here, the whole pack. All right, and so um, I'm just going to come to the side here. Just going to take my okay. And I, I didn't take one of the sausages out of the casing. And I'm going to multitask. You're gonna start getting that skill a little hot. I'm gonna spray here, but I, I, there's another cooking spray that I want to show you guys. This is a, a generic vegetable cooking spray, but I have a really nice smart balance one over there. Because a lot of viewers, you know, I love you know when I get comments from my my viewers on YouTube because they're like, you know what, Soraya, you show us every step of cooking, and because you know that's what it's all about. So we take a turkey sausage. Some people don't know what taking the, the meat out of the casing. What is that? They, don't, you know, they know they eat sausages, but they're like, really? There's a casing? Yeah, there is. This is the skin of the casing here. Okay. So what I do is I just just this comes off really easy. You throw this away, and you just place it there. Okay. So we're just going to. I'm gonna get a fork. And I'm going to lower that heat because, you know, it's not just the meat alone that we're going to use. We're going to put some spices in there, too. So, these are the sausages that are out of the casing. And I'm going to put all of them in here, even though this is way, way more than enough meat for this recipe. Okay? So, what we're going to do is just put it down like that. Just mash it down. We're going to lower her because what we're going to add to this as well, we're going to add some onions. We're going to add some, um, some red pepper, some green pepper, some garlic powder, some spices. And then there's a special sauce that I, I use, which I created, actually. And it's, I call it my pastelon sauce. So here we go. So what I want to do is... <coughs> you okay there? Mm -hmm. I have all this fabulousness going on, right? I'm just like, oh my God, what's going on? Where am I? You're in the kitchen. So what we're going to do is, we're just going to, you know, just add some onion. And this is like like half of a chopped onion. Okay, so I'll chop like that later. And then also, we're going to add some red onion for color. And then I have some. I'm not gonna say red onion. I meant red pepper. And then we're gonna add some green pepper. Also, because I love color. I just love having color in my food. And then I have some other sliced bean pepper here for garnishing all over. Okay, that's really good. So that's great. You're doing a great job, camera person. I love calling them camera persons. And then what I have here is a sauce. 
Now, when I make my meat sauces for my pastelon, for my pasteles, I like to, um, I make enough of the broth. And this broth I use for my empanadas. I use just like right now. It's like a seasoning broth. It's like a meat-based broth. And if you take a really good look at this, let's take a look at the light. You'll see there's no, like, fat. You, you'll see, like, there's no, like, layer of fat there. It's truly just flavor. And what's the flavor? You have meat stock, you have onion, you have garlic, you have uh, the green cacao, you have cilantro, you have olive oil. You have a lot of great flavors, okay? And that's just to kind of get this to cook up. And not just to cook up, but that sauce gives it so much flavor. So I call it my pastelon sauce. And I always keep some handy in the fridge. So in case if I want to make my empanadas or a cute little papi chula wants to come home and says, Hi, I love your empanadas. Can you make me some on the fly? I'm like, of course, my darling. I live to cook for you. And I live to cook for my viewers. So here we go. So now this is going to cook so fast because there's, of course, it's just ground turkey. And then while we're doing that, right, we're multitasking. You see how the red potatoes are going at it. Having a little party in there. That's nice. So we're going to just put up the heat here. And if you notice, we haven't put any oil yet to this at all. And I'm actually probably not going to add any oil at all. I'm just going to add the cooking spray. Okay. Just want to mix it up really nice. Okay. And now we're going to go to some of the ingredients here. Uh, the Smart Balance uh, cooking spray, which I love. Uh, why? Because it has omegas, just like 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 uh, salmon. <laughs> it's a healthy fat, and it's so cute. You just give it a good spray, All right? And then we're gonna just take some of the spices and move over a little bit. We have, of course, my best friend Goya Doba. I grew up on this. I really did. So we have some of that. What is that? Um, maybe about. Two teaspoons, maybe not a tablespoon. I would say two teaspoons, and then we have whole oregano. Um, you know, I should be using a measuring spoon, but I'm not. That's about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, and then you know how it's Latin stew garlic, darling. And that's about two teaspoons, two teaspoons, I would say. Now this is up really hot, so I'm going to turn it down. And I'm just going to actually use a nice round stick. Isn't this nice and red and cute? So we're just going to stir it up. Okay, we want to get the chunks, not to be chunks. We want it to get pretty, pretty, you know, fine texture. A nice, like, um, like it would be ground pork or ground beef, but in this case it's ground turkey. So we want that to be nice and loose, not too chunky. And then we want the onions to cook. You can take a shot at me now as I say what I need to say. We want everything to get nice and soft. We want all the, the onions to get soft. We want the peppers to get soft. We want the meat to cook really succulent and delicious and juicy. Uh, all the spices to come together. Now this is not going to take long to cook at all. But I'm going to cover her. So this way everything gets a little bit, you know, everything comes together. Uh, I may add a little bit of um, like a spaghetti sauce that I like using just to, just to give it a little bit more texture, a little bit more oomph. <laughs> um, that's like a similar way to get it. Uh, and yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So let me see if I have my best friend, one of my best friends in the kitchen. I think here she is. That's what old queens use, it's not amusing. <laughs> okay, oh turmeric, you know I love turmeric. I swear by turmeric, I really do, I really do. It gives it color, it has really great properties in it. It's, uh, legend has it that it um, helps with cancer and it, it fights Alzheimer's. Well, yeah, it does, that's what, that's what I've read. Yeah. That's what they say. So I'm just gonna lower that down. We're gonna, I'm, I'm whipping out a lot of secrets today. It's not going to be a cute looking secret, but a lovely secret. Now this is the fat we're going to add. The fat that we added was the cooking spray, right? You guys saw that, right? That's all I added. Here I have this olive oil that has um, achote seeds infused in it. Okay, so it gives it, so it gives it that nice red color. It gives it a nutty taste. 
and it gives it color. And actually, the natto seeds back in the day, um, natives and whatever, you know, natives, yeah, back in the day, they used to use it for uh, dyeing clothes. The natto seeds that you boil it down, or it's, it could stay in your counter, so be careful. Um, but it gives you a beautiful, beautiful color and a nice taste, a nice nutty taste. So that gave us color. We added turmeric. What was that about? Maybe one and a half teaspoons and a tablespoon of the annatto olive oil. It's a mixture. And I always keep that in the fridge too for my rice dishes, for my bean dishes, because it gives us color without using red. Now you're going to have to look at me, camera, because I'm really serious about this kind of stuff about trying to cook chemical free, right? And artificial coloring, red food coloring is so bad for you. Yellow, all of those crazy food, who did that? Who did that? Um, and I love Goya, and I know Goya probably doesn't like Soraya, because I always, I always talk about Goya, and I have a mixed relationship, love, hate. Because Goya is fabulous, but their little sazon packets, you know, that's all MSG. It's a chemical that makes you eat more. And then the red food coloring that's in there, haven't they seen Dr. Oz? I knew about that before Dr. Oz started talking about like the red food coloring. What that does to your brain is not cute. And little kids eat that food. Anyway, I'm not, that's, that's going to be another show. But um, it's not good for you. It's not good for you. It's not good. It's not good. It's good. So use the anato and use the turmeric. It's much more healthy. Look, look. Look at the color. Cliff, right? That's all natural. Look, like Soraya's natural. Look at that. Like she's a natural diva just for today. Right? Hello. Yes. Absolutely. On sunny Saturday. Right? So as I hope that the cooking show teaches you and show, I can show you that you can get taste, you can get color naturally, naturally. Yes, yes. Okay, so now I'm going to cover this. Okay, I'm going to cover this and I'm going to let this cook. Okay, I'm going to maybe let this, yeah, give it like five minutes. Um, and then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, we're going to strain the potatoes, you know, take the, water out of the potatoes. That should be another 15 minutes there. So while this is cooking and the potatoes are boiling, we're going to be right back. Um, the potatoes are boiling, right? Uh, the meat is still cooking. Now the meat's pretty much cooked, but we're going to come over here for a little bit. What I want to do is get some of that moisture out. And as, let's take a good look at this. You can see a little bit of fat. I mean, I'm, I'm like that. I'm like, well, how, how much fat is here? One tablespoon of olive oil with the annatto, right? And the spray. And the meat, the turkey has its own fat. It's, it's, it's cooking up. It's really nice. See how cute that is? It's just so, so nice. And if you guys were here, I'm going to have to get so right on this. If you guys were here and could smell this, I mean, it's not just because I'm making it. <laughs> Camera person, how does it smell? It smells so delicious. I'm going to have to open up the window because my, this outfit is going to smell nothing like, like It's going to smell like turkey, like uh, <laughs> spiced, beautiful turkey. But yeah, so good, good. So. I'm just going to put this to the side. I'm going to lower the heat just a little bit, but it's still going to cook uncovered because I want to get that moisture up. So now we have the potatoes. The potatoes have been cooked, and they've been cooled down, right, because we're going to mash them up. And the reason why I want them to cool down is because I'm actually going to form the ball in my hand. So if, if this is piping hot, you know, it's going to be a hard thing to do. It's going to be difficult. So we let the potatoes cool down at room temperature. They're not mashed yet, and we're going to do that. Uh, so we have the two pounds of potato. We have one brown egg. Well, we need is one. And we're going to come to this bowl here with a whisk. Okay? We're just going to make some room here on the kitchen counter. We're going to crack this lovely egg. We're going to bless that egg too. Honey. And we're going to put this over right here. And then we're going to whisk up the egg. Okay, we're going to whisk. And you guys have probably whisked the night before, right? You just take it, you whisk away, you whisk away, you whisk away. That's cute. And so now that's done. So now we're going to take the potato masher, because we're going to add the egg and some spices and some lovely things to the potato, right? So we're just going to go ahead, mash it up. Now you're going to cook the potatoes for about 30 minutes, no more than 30 minutes, because if you do over 30, they're going to be really soft. You want them to be at least fork tender, right? So you go ahead and you work hard and you mash them up. Okay. I hope this is interesting for all of you as you see Soraya mash up potatoes. Think of something nice while you're mashing. What can I think of? Well, I have a really great camera person who's here today helping me. Isn't that fabulous? 
<laughs> now you're gonna have to look at me, Karen, person, as I say all this about business. business. <laughs> what can I think of that's really sweet and lovely? Uh, well, I'll continue to think about the New York Times ad being out that's just so hot. And then I'll think about the camera person that's helping me today. I act a professional to help. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> and what else? Uh, I've been to the gym all week, so I get to mash really well. <laughs> get to work my biceps. And what else? Yeah, I did have a nice little job of flexibility. And that's always a blessing, right? For somebody like myself who needs like that flexibility for the cookie shells. So, so now we're going to take the egg. We're just going to add her to the potato. Okay. And then what we're going to do is... And um, I should really use, oh, this is nice. Uh, I should use a measuring spoon in that here. I have a tablespoon here. And I'm just going to dry it off just going to put some spices on there. I'm going to take the little cap off to make it a little easy so you guys could see. So why don't you come over? I'm going to do less than a tablespoon because I don't want it to be salty now. And then I'll kind of taste it as I go along. But it's a tablespoon of Goya adobo. Now this I love about uh, Goya because there's no MSG in this at all. People say, oh, is there MSG in there? No, there's not. Okay, thank God. There's some adobo brands that do have MSG, so don't use those if you can try not to. And then uh, we're going to go, and I'm going to start, because I think some people really want to see measuring. Um, I'm going to use oregano again here, even though we have it in the meat. That's about a teaspoon. Now remember, this is a tablespoon, so it's a little less, a lot less than a tablespoon. So I'm gonna say a teaspoon. And basically, some of the same spices that went into the meat mixture are going here as well. Okay, so we're gonna just put like, maybe it's about a teaspoon of garlic. And let's see what else, oh my God, my secret ingredient, flaxseed meal. Now this is what a lot of Latinos don't use. Like I use this in my pasteles. I use this, there's a tembleque recipe, which is a coconut pudding that I added flaxseed to it as well. I kind of, the flaxseed went into drag, meaning the flaxseed got mixed in with the cinnamon. So people, when they ate it, they weren't really thinking, oh, it's brown. So they thought it was all cinnamon, but it was a, it was a mix. I tricked them. <laughs> I put flaxseed meal in the tembleque, which is a coconut pudding, which is unheard of. But we're going to add a quarter cup. Actually, that's a lot. I'm probably going to put half a cup of the flaxseed meal. This has... Uh, B vitamins, no, quarter cup is good. This has B vitamins, this has omegas, this has fiber. It's so, so good for you. It's really, 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 really good. I'm gonna take this and put it to the side. We could take a look at the meat. The meat, right, all the moisture is up. That's nice. And what I'm gonna do, since this has to cool down too, I'm gonna put this by the window. I hope it doesn't permeate it. So we're gonna come here. Spoon. So guys, let's just backtrack a little bit. Two pounds of potato, right? It's cooked and mashed. And then we have some adobo. We have some garlic powder. We have a little bit of oregano. We have what else? We put the one egg in here, which is fabulous. All right, and this is the mixture. Now, one more thing we have to add is a tablespoon of cornstarch. And then I'm gonna talk about one of my boyfriends now. I'm gonna talk about cornstarch, because one of my boyfriends, even though he's a little older than what I, the guys I usually like to date, but one of my boyfriends is Bob's Red Mill. His brand of products, I would love to meet him. I've seen a picture of him. He looks like an old sailor. <laughs> Look at him here. I'm gonna have to get the video on him. Yeah, he looks like a mountain climber. Look at him, this old geezer. He's so fierce though. Bob, I love you. I always kiss the back. Look, what? Mm. Bob, you're so fierce. Your products are just amazing. I'm getting chills again. I am. Yes, all these gluten free things and organic this. He's fabulous. Where did he come? What nationality is he? Is he Puerto Rican too? He doesn't look it. He is so fierce. His products are amazing. Oh my God, Bob. Jeez, what inspired you to do that? He's got all these great products. I love them. Oh, God. Anyway, so we're going to come back to the mix. You can take a good look at this here. But we got that, um, that tablespoon of corn storage, and I'm going to get a fork. 
man, it's such a mess, my God. So let's mix it up really good. All right, all jokes aside, I just went talking about my boyfriend, Bob, who I never met. And uh, his products are just so fantastic. Oh my God, his products are amazing. Cliff, are you from, you, do you do any healthy foods? Or, no, right? No. Okay. no. Okay, so you don't know too much about Bob, but no. his products, if you go to the supermarket, his, his product line is increasing all the time. It's just amazing, 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 amazing products. So now this is the mix of the potato, all right? This is what's going to serve as the, the, the outside. I like to say masa, it's a Spanish term for like dough or like, um, like a carb base. Like if it's a dough or you, you call it masa, so I'm used to that. But it's, let's say the potato mixture. This is what's going to be used for that. And actually, I'm going to put a little bit of black pepper here. And that's the way it should be. It should be nice and firm because if it's if it's too soft, it's going to be really hard to manipulate to make the rice balls. Excuse me, the potato balls. I'm thinking about the Italian rice ball. This is so similar. Okay, so that's mixed up really nice. That's good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to put the uh, the meat mixture in a bowl, and then I'm going to form the little balls. I'm going to start cooking up. So we're going to be right back. I started making some of the balls just because. I wanted, it. I wanted to do it, so I did it, right? So I'm going to show you how it's done. I have a couple on the stove. Look, this is what they end up looking like. They're really cute, uh, but I'm going to show you how we're going to assemble them now. We have the potato mixture like we went through already with all the spices mashed up cute. Now, we're going to coat it with a quarter cup of cornstarch, which I already mixed it up. Quarter cup of cornstarch, quarter cup of flaxseed meal, and what else? It was flaxseed meal, a quarter cup of corn starch, and a quarter cup of Betty Crocker's gluten-free Bisquick. I should get the box out of the refrigerator and kiss it. I do. <laughs> and I said it on my um, New York Times piece, God bless Betty Crocker. I mean, this is so cool. Look, Bisquick gluten-free. Here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so fabulous. <laughs> Almost as fabulous as Bob's red milk. I don't know what Betty looks like, but thank you, Betty. So we have a quarter cup of the Bob's Red Mill um, cornstarch, gluten-free, a quarter cup of the gluten-free Bisquick, and a quarter cup of flaxseed meal. Now all of those ingredients are gluten-free, okay? So I didn't really get into that in the beginning, right? I didn't go into that, and I'm going to go into it now. This recipe is gluten-free, free from food colorings, free from MSG, no beef, no pork, okay? So now that I said that, I'm going to lower the stove a little bit, and I'm going to, what we're going to do with this mix, right, I have, this is what we're going to coat the balls with once we form it, but to keep um, the potato from sticking on my hands, I have a little mix of the flour and all of that here, which is almost like a dipping sauce, if you want to think that way, and I'm just going to dip my hands in here, just coat my hands with the flour, and then um, I guess maybe it might be interesting for viewers to get a gauge of dry from flour and cornstarch. Like, what am I using? This is a quarter cup, so I'm going to spoon up a quarter cup of the mix, right? Put it in my hands like this, okay? And then we're going to just kind of spread it out like a patty, let's say, or like a pancake or something like that. Not too thin, though, right? but it's your preference. If you want to make it thinner, you can. Now, let's take a look here. You see the flax seeds, flaxseed meal? You see the skin of the red potato? So, usually this would be a peeled potato without the flaxseed and without the skin. So it would just be a white ball. And I have nothing against anything that's white, darling. My best friends are white. <laughs> I love everybody, honey. I love white, I love brown, I love black, I love it all, honey. But when it comes to food and nutrients, you have the fiber of the red potato, you have the flaxseed meal in here. So you got all of that going on. So it's a different experience. It's not just gonna be this white mass. You're gonna have some, some nutrients in there. You're gonna have some color. And then we add, like, let's, that, that's a sixteenth of a cup or eighth of a cup of the meat, okay? The turkey meat that we cooked with the flavorings and the turmeric and the annatto seed oil. And then we're just going to just 
just bring it together. And you could just take your time with this. And you could just pat the meat down, bring the dough over. Someone said it's like a dumpling. Yeah, it's almost like a dumpling. It kind of starts that way, but then you're going to make a ball out of it. And you're going to just seal it up. You can make a ball, you can make a patty, whatever, you know, whatever you want. There's no right or wrong when you're cooking, right? As long as it tastes good and it's healthy, that's what you want. So now we have a nice little ball, okay? It didn't stick to my hands because of the flour, like I said, and it's gluten-free flour. And then we do a light coating of the cornstarch, the gluten-free Betty Crocker, which I adore her, and you know my lover, Bob's Red Milk Cornstarch and Flaxseed Meal. We have a cute little ball, see? Nice. And then we place it here. Now, we have the nonstick skillet. I already placed a couple of balls there. Okay. And then I'm just going to make another one. So, this guy, so guys, you can see, boys and girls, you can see exactly how this is done. Get a couple of balls in there. You can get a good view. Take a quarter cup. Okay. I hear it sizzling over there, so I'm going to just turn it down a little bit. All right. We have the meat mixture here. Yes, and now I'm going to tell you guys something that you can actually add to if you want to make it very Latino. You like how I said that, right? Latino. You can add a little bit of uh, Spanish olives with capers, mm. uh, which is really good. But you got to be careful with that. Add that at the end. Don't cook with that. I keep telling people that. Don't cook with the olives and the capers because it will make the food really salty. You have to be careful. So you can add the olives at the end to the meat mixture if you wish. In this case, I didn't do it because I felt the meat was already spicy enough. Camera person, right? Didn't you think that the meat was flavorful oh, No, enough? it was great. Perfect and as I it is. I yes. felt if I added the olives, it might take it a little bit over the edge to a, a saltiness that I, I certainly don't want. Mm. So you have to kind of gauge it. Um, so just be, just be aware of that. And then we just dust the potato ball. And we bring it over here. Bring it to the, the little family that's going on. There's <laughs> five siblings here. They can Mm. Really nice. Okay? That's so delicious. I'm going to cover that. And then we're going to let that cook, let's say, for like three to four minutes. And then we're going to be back. Hey, everybody, we're back. We're almost done. It's a fabulous recipe, right? And fabulosity takes time. Okay? So we're going to come to the dish. Um, yeah? Okay. No, no, no. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to come to the dish here. Yeah. Okay. We're going we're gonna to come down. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so these are the potato balls, right? The relleno de papas, as, as, as it's called in Puerto, Puerto Rican language here, right? Uh, traditional Puerto Rican cuisine. Now, I showed you how to form the balls. You coat them with the cornstarch, with the flaxseed meal, and the gluten-free bready cracker flour. And we cook them medium, medium high. Just cook them a little bit uncovered. And then now, I've had them there for about a minute or two, and I'm going to just spray them just so they get a little coating. Right. And then I'm going to cover them. Get the cover here. Hey, oh, the camera person, you're doing a great <laughs> job, Cliff. <laughs> then we're going to wait for that a little bit, but we're going to talk a bit because I have some here that are done already. Look how beautiful they look. Nice and brown. All right, so they're not, they're not like balls. Okay. But, you know, look, look how lovely that is. I'm ready to just throw one in my mouth, honey. <laughs> but I'm not. That's what they put. You can come a little closer. Alright, so uh, actually I think it's okay if we I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna how I'm gonna garnish them. And we have my fabulous Marilyn Monroe plate. I love her. I love having my little Marilyn Monroe plate. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with these lovely things. I, I was in the supermarket today shopping for the ingredients. And you know, I had my glasses on, which is always a good thing because if a good looking guy comes, I can notice him right away. <laughs> but you know, I didn't notice any good looking guys in the supermarket today. But what I did notice at the supermarket, because it was really early, it was too early. I'm not up yet. It's beautiful. What, what is this? This is like a beautiful lettuce that's pink. And actually, this is probably not the right plate for it. But I just thought this would be so beautiful, right? I'm going to show you. Let me see if I can get a green. So Marilyn won't be upset with me. She know that I'm trying to get all the color right. See, this will work. I thought this was so gorgeous, right? To just place a couple here. Like that, right? Actually, let's do her like that. My hands are clean. 
And I thought it would just be so beautiful, right? We put the potato bowl there like that, right? And it just kind of sits like that. And if you wanted to, which is really cute, so you're having a totally gluten-free sandwich here. You can wrap it, right? We're not going to wrap it. You could do it. My God, if, if the camera wasn't rolling, I'd throw it at my mouth right now, <laughs> I swear. And I thought it would be just so cool, right, if we keep up with the color a little bit, right? You, you don't have to put this totally in your mouth like that, but you could if you wanted to. If the camera wasn't rolling, I would. A little red pepper, fresh, right? That's really nice. And then we're gonna go, because you know, I like color, right? So we just throw a little bit of the green. You don't have to eat it. Uh, but you know, for presentation, you know I'm all about presentation. I'm gonna show off. That was annoying me. A um, little bit of color. Yes, yes, yes. And just, you know, because too many of us, and I, I'm sim no, I'm not guilty of it anymore. But I think some shredded uh, carrots is really nice. So, so much of Latin eating is unfortunately fried in white flour, right? And there's no fresh vegetable to kind of join this all up together. I think it's a little crowded, but I'm going to move this over like that. So I think it's really cute, right? If you could just take this. Now, a little child can eat this, right? And you'll be feeding a child something really healthy that's not fried. This is serious business. Nutrition is serious, right? This is not fried, there's no gluten, there's no milk in this. So there's some dairy, there's just one egg in this whole entire mix. So it's really, really healthy. No MSG, no food coloring. You can just take this right now. Camera person, you come. My hands are clean. No, no, I'm going to take the camera now. Oh, oh, okay. Take that. I just want you to have a little bite of that. Oh, really? Yes, go ahead. Okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> this is Cliff from QPTV, such a good friend. He's a, he's a <laughs> fan of Sarah. He's a, no, no, but you have to turn around though. We have to see. Oh, no, we have to you. see. Okay, go ahead. You're, you're, you're closet eater like Soraya. Mm. Isn't that kind of cool? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get the coolness of the vegetable and all? Mm -hmm. No, really, you got to tell. What do you think? What do you think? It's delicious. <laughs> oh, that's good. Mm. That was great. I don't think he's going to put that down. That's great. I know. My <laughs> Okay, so you keep going. No. Oh, no, no, that's good. Okay, cool. Because I'm going to serve plates, actually. But, right, wasn't that kind of cool, camera person? Okay. Definitely. Right, yeah, I'm going to make a nice plate and for our guests mm. as well. I'm going to finish that. Oh, I'm gonna, yeah, <laughs> we're going to come over here, right? We have to taste test. Okay, but we're just... Yeah, we're well, I need too much silhouette. Nice. Yeah. Not that it's bad to get too down, but mm. we don't want it to get... Uh, so everybody, so you're getting this here. You're getting oh, okay. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm still munching on uh, this one. He was, he had, he, you know, I'm over here I got distracted. This, and he's like totally like, oh my god, that was so good. I wish, I wonder, she, I wish she would hurry up and finish these things. Yeah, because I want the rest crazy. of it. You're gonna take some home if you I think I'm gonna give you the camera in a minute. <laughs> Right, so you guys are seeing what I just did, right? I just mm -hmm. turned them over, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're cooking up really nice. Mm -hmm. Where's my... Okay, you know I love this small bath. I'm so glad that the cooking sprays... Well, yeah, they're coming out with this Omega oils instead of just regular vegetable oil or soybean oil, which is okay. But that's nice with the Omega. So you see what we just did? We coated them. Yeah, good. I just want to make sure that light is on, honey. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure we got you biting into some <laughs> sandwich, which is actually a rayo de papa. All right, so good. We're going to just, I'm going to actually put the timer on that, just to make sure it's going to get too brown. Okay, so we're going to come back over here. So I'm going to make a couple of plates. So we're going to probably end this. I'm going to make a couple of plates, and then we're going to sit down and have a little taste test, okay? So we'll be right back. Guys, hey, you know how I like to do all my videos, right? All my, whoever's here with me, I have a... Cliff is here as my camera person for, for the day. We have a guest. Can I mention you? Absolutely. Sarah's here. Sarah's visiting. She's a new friend of Soraya's. S for Soraya, S for Sarah. So that's so, so fabulous. Um, I have two guests here. And you know, I always like to have my guests try my food, right? Because I can say, oh, this is delicious, which it usually is. I'm not going to lie. But it's always good when you have friends over, right? And you, or you have family over. They share the meal with you. It just makes everything so much more interesting. So I just wanted to say that. Because I'm going to come away from the camera and I'm going to allow my two guests to sample the food that I just made. Now, again, this is Soraya Sobredad. Sor 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 I got to slow down. 
Soraya Sobedas, what did I call this? Soraya Sobedas, um, Papi Papa, Relleno de Papa. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, so that's <laughs> my, <laughs> right? That's, and I need to eat soon, because like, whew. But I'm not gonna eat right now. I'm gonna let my guests, my lovely two guests, I'm gonna let them sample the dish, and I'm gonna get behind the camera. So, you guys could just be natural, just try the dish and whatever comes to mind as you sample. Bon I want to try it the way you did. Mm -hmm. oh, I have definitely. to do a little assembly work. So yeah, we did the wrap before, like with the uh, the the like the reddish lettuce leaves. There's a name to those that lettuce. I, I don't know what it is. It just caught my eye today, and I I got it. But you know what? Uh, I'm gonna bring the tripod a little closer. It's delicious. Sarah, you you're biting yeah. into it. I'm so excited. Mm. It's a nice relleno de papa that's not fried, and again, it's gluten-free, it's dairy-free as far as there's no milk or cheese in it. Mm. And then we have Cliff, who's a big mm. fan of Sarah Sobada. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, what do you think? What do you think, guys? I think it's amazing. There's, there's a little, the lettuce is a little bit bitter, yes. and it, it mixes perfectly with the, just the richness of mm -hmm. everything oh. going on inside. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's very good. Cliff, what do you think? Mm. It's absolutely delicious, and I will always work for food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the perfect camera person. Not only are you talented, but it's easy to, to compensate you, because you can always take the food with you. So that's wonderful. Now, I'm going to kind of join in a bit here. I'll probably just scoot over a little bit to my guest, Sarah, on this side here. Gosh, I'm a hardworking diva, darling. <laughs> it's like the commercial. Remember, she 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 brings home the bacon and then she cooks it up in the pan. Okay, right. That's what Sarah did today. But no bacon, <laughs> no pork, no beef. Oh my God, they look so cute. Not because I made them. This is absolutely Oh my God, I, I love like wraps like this. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wow, wraps taking a bite. The turkey has really good texture too. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wow. You can tell by the silence. And it's, <laughs> it's totally um, balanced. Like, it's not too, and not because I made it. Mm -hmm. Not because I made it. Like, boys and girls out there. You know, I love it when I eat something, right? And it's just a mellow taste. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's a lot of flavors here, right? Mm -hmm. There's the turkey, there's the cilantro, there's, there's all this going on inside, but it, it's not overpowering. And you can taste each thing. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's balanced really nicely. And it's true. The, uh, the lettuce just this and that. Thank you. Thank you. Let me get a piece of it. Thank you. I'm sorry, my guests. Even the napkins. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No oh my God, it is good. So I'm going to sign off. This is Sarai Sobedal with two fabulous guests wow. for my cooking show here mm -hmm. today, which is Sarai Sobedal's Papi Relleno de Papa. Um, and it's not relleno with a papi, but it's relleno de papa. <laughs> it's so delicious. It's Puerto Rican. You know how I do it. Latin, uh, low fat, high fiber, not fried, and it's really delicious. Try the recipe. If you have any questions, email me. Bye. Bye.